and welcome to Back Issues. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. It's taken us almost eight years to talk about this celebrated mm. Green Lantern, Green Arrow story, which has been referred to as Hard Traveling Heroes. What? Yeah. Hard Traveling? Yeah. Okay. It's like a road trip? It, yes. <laughs> uh, hard Traveling like Heroes. Space? No. Nah. Through America. <laughs> this is a road trip book, baby. Yeah, I feel like that's really boring for Green Lantern. He's been through space. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but you know, that's the whole point, is that like Green Lantern's got his head in the stars and he needs to bring it back down to Earth. Because mm. this book, written by Denny O'Neill with art by Neil Adams, was... The history of it is a lot more fun than reading it. Oh. Uh, it, it is fun. No, 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 no. So Wait, you mean a book that's like premised on the fact that both characters have the same color in their name isn't like just awesome? <laughs> is it just intrinsically cool? <laughs> yeah. It becomes Won't that make us green. <laughs> like money. Oh. oh yes. The green. Yeah. God damn it. <laughs> green Lantern was unsellable mm. in the like late '60s, early '70s. Uh, super, Why? Nobody cared. Like we've been to the moon, so like space heroes. <laughs> we've been to the moon. <laughs> Fuck it. Yeah, I don't care anymore. Star Wars is still seven years away. I think it's because Marvel in the like in the yeah. in the mid to late 60s, 60, like two up to sixty six. Stan and Jack and Steve are just like, look at all these relatable heroes that are doing regular shit. Kinda. I mean, <laughs> we've read a couple of those stories. And uh, yeah. The, relatable <laughs> is a loose term. Kind of like for this. the time. For the time, and that's the thing is like you got to look at this from a historical vantage and not from a like, dude, you want to read some killer Green Lantern stories? Pick up Hard Traveling Heroes. You're going to love it. It's like, listen, if you're if you're conditioned on new comics, that's not fair to this book <laughs> to do that. Right, because this was written in a different time. Every single issue, Hal recites the Lantern Oath. It's exhausting. <laughs> I mean, it's only one panel, right? He's not like doing it the whole book. He's not doing the whole book where he's like saying it to himself as he's flying. No, but like, it's just that level of repetition. Yeah. Right. Of course, that being said, like how many stories with Venom in them huh. start with we were innocent ones until that accursed <laughs> Spider-Man ruined our lives? So yeah. maybe, maybe it's that whole thing of like, no, we have to reinforce it. Every comic is someone's first. <laughs> yeah, except that Stan Lee's every... mantra. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. DC's getting on board. That's true. <laughs> yeah. That. Okay, fair enough. Sure. So superstar artist Gil Kane was drawing Green Lantern at the time, and then he left. Left he Green Lantern. He fucked off. He fucked off, but well, because or sales in Green Lantern. No, he left. Uh, did okay. did because... he leave to Marvel? Yes. <laughs> uh, yes. Okay. He left to Marvel and immediately went to Spider Man. Oh, and shit. It's not like he went to Spider Man to no acclaim. He drew the night when Stacy died. He drew the original Clone Saga. Like, oh, wow. No, Gil Kane is a celebrated Spider Man artist. Uh, he did he did do his style similar to Jazzy John Romita, so it's not like it was so distinct that it's like, mm. oh my god, like Gil Kane set the friggin' world on fire. But Gil Kane was a solid superhero artist, and Green Lantern was a solid superhero book about a guy with a ring that flew in space and beat up aliens. Like, that's it, and it just, it didn't sell. And so Green Lantern's on the chopping block, and they're like, this book is shit-canned. And Julius Swartz had a soft spot for the Green Lantern book. He's like, Green Lantern's cool. You know, he's, a, he's a leaguer, he's got a fun costume, he's got, a, he's got cool powers. Like, this book should sell, why doesn't it sell? In the history of the Green Lantern, Green Arrow book, you'll find two versions of it. Neil Adams, the artist's history, and what happened. And <laughs> you'll, and, and So I everyone think, else's. Uh, yes, <laughs> and Neil Adams is an interesting figure because he is, an incredible artist. Yeah, and, I just look at this art, I'm like, that looks awesome. And it looks nothing like anything that was happening in its time. Yeah, like, it looks very modern. Yeah, it looks really modern. Like, they, they, they The faces in, are incredibly expressive. Yeah, yeah. no, it's yeah. incredible. It, it, he deserves every bit of acclaim for his talent. Mm. That That's being said. said <laughs> his, he, he also, the thing is, like he also, I think, knows that like the comic book industry is small and insular, and if you control the narrative, mm -hmm. or at least push yours long enough, you will outlive the people who would argue with you, right. and then your reality becomes the <laughs> history. And so he's been saying forever that like the Green Lantern book looked like a challenge for him, and he wanted to come to Green Lantern and fix it. When in reality, or at least according to Denny O'Neill, uh, Julius Schwartz was like, 
I think that since this book's getting canceled anyway, let's just try something crazy. So Denny and Neil, you guys do whatever you want with this book. Mm. And that's the one I'm inclined to believe, yeah. or some marriage of the two. Yeah. There are a couple of things that Neil Adams says about his history with this book that I'm like, yeah, I kind of got, I kind of dig that. Or the very least, the decisions he's made. Like, mm. there's an ending to one of the most popular comic book story arcs of all time, and it is just like, Adams just hijacked the last two pages of the book before it went to print, mm. and just did his own, and I'm glad he did. Hmm. But they go on this book, and they're like, okay, so. Green Lantern, unsellable. Green Arrow, never had a book. Oh, really? Never a Green Arrow book. Where was he from? He's from DC Comics, or at least what DC Comics was formed into when it became like a Battle World-esque patchwork of superheroes that were all acquired from different companies. Like, right. I'm in there. I just, you know, he's I never a, get my own story he's because perpetual I'm not Robin star. Hood. Well, he, yeah, he was. I mean, they, they were like, you're the Robin Hood of the Justice League. Right. Yeah. But, uh, but even Robin Hood got a comic and I didn't. Did he? I don't know. I mean, probably in the 30s. But like, exactly. Yeah. He was a leaguer, though. He was a leaguer okay. and uh, and he was a perpetual guest star. He's always in somebody okay. else's book. Gotcha. And uh, they so they went, okay, well, Greenland is not selling very well. And Denny O'Neill had this idea or Julius Schwartz had this idea or Neil Adams had this idea. But one of these three men or some combination thereof had this idea. Let's just cram Green Arrow into Green Lantern and make this book. And it came from, and it, by the way, they kept the number of Green Lantern. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Green Lantern yeah, became Green Lantern, Green Arrow, the book, but it's still using the Green Lantern legacy so, number. So, yeah, so Green Arrow Green was Lantern. just like, I'm yeah. gonna jump on your numbers and swing into your comic. Yeah, you know? come on. Uh, they had just redesigned Green Arrow's outfit a couple years prior, and mm. they had reestablished his origins. Of course, like people were talking about- Re cha They changed his outfit? Yeah, well, originally it was a little lamer, or <laughs> it was a little more bland. Lamer than this. It was bland. <laughs> I like this outfit, yeah, especially depicted like by it. Neil Adams. Like, yeah, he is he Robin Hood? Yeah, but like, yeah, it's Green Arrow. He's Robin Hood. End of story. <laughs> yeah, what did he look like before? He looked less distinct. Oh. You know, like there's there's less nuance in the di in the difference of green. Okay. He looked less like a superhero and more like a Robin. I see. Like a sidekick. A sidekick, yeah. Okay. So, okay. I'm Batman with a bow and arrow, and they're like, <laughs> lame. So earlier in Justice League, they established, of course, because Green Arrow had no book, that uh, Green Arrow, who had been rich, lost his fortune. Right. So right. they got that out of the way. Yeah. And they reestablished his costume, and looking like he was drawn by Neil Adams, suddenly <laughs> people might like him and find him interesting. Basically, the idea was uh, Green Lantern, Hal Jordan, for the longest time, was just like, I'm superhero, I do good, I fight aliens, I have no personality. <laughs> and so O'Neill's like, well, the book's getting canceled and I'm gonna put Green Arrow in here. Let's make a statement. Let's make a statement. Let's do something interesting and new. And I've got these two malleable characters that have no discernible personalities. So <laughs> I'm gonna make them have really distinct personalities. Oh. So since Denny O'Neill was a hardcore liberal, he's like, Green Arrow is now a liberal. And he is like a 1960s into 70s outspoken in your face liberal. Right. He's like one step away from bombing army recruiting centers. Yeah. <laughs> Hal Jordan is part of a core. That's the thing. Like he believes in structure and, and like rules. rules. Uh. He's a cop essentially. So they're like, he's the conservative. Yeah. Right. And so they're like, let's bring both these guys into this world and have them look at it from their vantage points and how they come to mutual decisions and we will not favor one over the other. Mm. Lies. <laughs> Daniel O'Neill's a leftist. He's like, I'm gonna favor the left. Right. That's and funny because Green Arrow has less of an opinion or less of an impact on the books, but he's gonna have more of an impact in this. He really does. No, Green Arrow dwarfs Green Lantern in this book. Mm. He's constantly, every time Hal Jordan's like, I mean, I don't know, maybe they have a point. And Green Arrow's like, how dare you say that? <laughs> They have a point! You got a point on your jackbooted thug head, you <laughs> fucking Nazi bastard! They are best friends in this book, and he is constantly in Hal's face, just screaming into it. Does Hal Jordan puts up the slightest resistance, and he's like, how dare you? And I'm like, fair enough. That's, that's, it's amazing. That's not is just... it because he's poor now? I mean, I think so. If you were to get upset, if you were to get into the, the psychology of Green Arrow, yeah, this dude was a rich person. Now he lives in the slums of New York, which is incidentally where Denny O'Neill also lived. Ah. And so he's trying to like he's show. Like, what you. the fuck is this? This <laughs> is a disaster. This sucks. <laughs> yes. You're That's just exactly. on your own. There's no way out. Right. Yeah. I can't. This I, is a travesty. Green Lantern, Green Arrow became this kind of like socially relevant commentary book, hmm. and it went in a deliberate direction where they're like, we're going to 
talk about issues. And every issue of the book will highlight a different issue with America. Oh, wow, that's cool. Are there 50 issues for each state? <laughs> there most certainly are not. Uh, <laughs> the, the Hard Trial and Hero story arc is like four issues. So okay. I wouldn't worry about uh, it. But uh, it, what's funny is, you know, Adams is like charged about it because he actually volunteered in like drug rehab centers and cared about society and the ills of drug use and such. Mm -hmm. Denny O'Neill also, of course, like lived in the slums of New York and had his own opinions about socially relevant situations. Yeah, but, like he even lived in it and he grew up in yeah. it, like that affects you. Right, but also it, to hear him tell it, O'Neill always talks about this book like, I mean, uh, you know, uh, yeah, I cared, but at the end of the day it was a paycheck and I'm just doing the work. Hmm. He, he has no rose tinted glasses about the run. Right. You know, and in fact, he, you know. Nor is he trying to like put so much pressure on it, be like, look, it's my life's work. And well, if it doesn't have an impact, what did <laughs> I do with my life? The other thing is that like this book did have an impact and it won like multiple awards while also getting write ups in the New York Times. Oh, wow. And O'Neill himself talks about how the fame and glory of this run really fucked his head up and like hurt mm -hmm. his marriage and his relationship with his children. Like anything oh, that wasn't geez. a typewriter, as he called it, was just irrelevant. Oh, he was just like so he no, lost so himself in the book. He lost himself in the in, in the acclaim of oh. what he did to the comic book industry. Right. And so yeah, I can imagine that like thirty years later, when they're asking him about that run, he's like, I mean, it was a paycheck. I just did what I could. Right. It's like because I don't want to remember me screaming in my wife's face about how <laughs> I'm the guy who made Green Arrow <laughs> relevant again. Of course, the, the the two things people remember from this are an interaction the Green Lantern has with uh, a black man in the streets of New York, and the other one is the uh, My Ward is a Junkie heroin two-parter. Oh. Those are the two big things that happen from this run. Yeah, people who don't even know comics are like, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I know that cover. <laughs> Speedy's shooting heroin on the cover of a comic book. And uh, we'll talk about that when we get through it. But now, okay. and, and so the stories are like, I don't know how to even do this episode. <laughs> like, Yeah, because there's probably not much of a through line. I mean, the through line is them going through America. Right. But what's great is like, I think by issue three or four, Ali says that they've gone across the country twice. Oh. And I'm like. <laughs> In three issues? Like, we only Can we I only see, see some of that? We only see in the highlights? Like, what are. What were the low ends of that run? Like just, oh, uh, Green Lantern ate a bad egg salad sandwich and he had the shits for three full days. <laughs> and we just drove through Tennessee, just stopping at rest areas. Like, I don't know what it is, but it's just funny that they were like, no, we we went. Are you telling me they drove? Yes. Hal didn't just fly them across? No. So we'll, so we'll get into the first issue. The first it issue from the sets ground. up everything. All right. So the first issue is there's a dude in a suit in the streets outside of a tenement building and he is being roughed up by some regular looking people. <laughs> okay. According to Hal Jordan, that means that some street toughs are assaulting a regular upstanding citizen. And so he immediately disperses the crowd and sends one kid to jail. Like oh. literally puts him in a cage uh, that's made of his hard light construct and sends him to prison from across the, 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 the city. I love the police being like, you can't do that. Yeah, what did, did he do? I don't understand. System. Superman does it all the time. So, <laughs> what, are this, what, is he, what are we going to charge him with? What was his crime? What's the evidence? Right? Like, did you write it down with your Green Lantern ring <laughs> yeah, on the is way? Is there a note attached to the bars? Oh, yeah. yeah. He roughed up some guy, and I'm sure he'll press charges or whatever. It's, <laughs> they just go, okay, <laughs> like, thank, good night. Another job well done, Green Lantern. You can go. Yeah. I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> <laughs> The city, uh, Star City apologizes yeah. for your treatment you, at the hands you've of seen a him, right? Like he could do anything. He could kill us all with that <laughs> yeah. Green Lantern ring. Like just let him. We just, just need to humor. Just let him get his jollies. He, he has to do this, otherwise yeah. we're not going to hear the end of it. Where do you live? We'll have it. Well, the squad car said you all. <laughs> but uh, Green Lantern shows up. He he he, he roughs things up. He goes to the, the upstanding gentleman, and he's like, "I'm sorry, those men won't bother you anymore." And he's like, "Thank God! Like, good for you, Green Lantern. You're a good guy." Mm -hmm. And Green Lantern's like, "Oh yeah, I am a good guy. Oh awesome. yeah, I did an awesome." And then job. Green Arrow's like, "Boo!" And people like start throwing trash at Green Lantern. And Green Arrow's there too, and he's like, you suck! Green Lantern sucks! And Green Lantern's like, hey, hey. Ollie, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. What, 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 you're, you're, you're siding with these anarchists, is what he calls it? Uh. Just people being mean in the street? Right. No one has ever booed me before. How dare you boo me? I'll kill everyone with this Green Lantern They ring. don't even know the word boo on other planets. <laughs> Except for that ghost planet. So Green Lantern uh, gets given a tour of the building by Green Lantern. He's like, come with me and I'll show you what's up. He's like, I'm yeah. the ghost of Christmas present, motherfucker. Let's go. <laughs> so they walk through this, this tenement building and he's like, e everyone here is poor and broke and lives in this shitty building that has never been repaired 
by the slumlord that you just protected. So years have gone by where these poor people who couldn't get a break live in this shitty building. They're just stuck there. And now they're all getting evicted. And it's mostly made up of the extreme poor or the elderly. Mm. And... Right, people who can't fix their situation at this point. Right, and yeah. the slumlord is now going to evict them to sell the lot to a developer to create a money-making parking lot. That's the plan. <laughs> and a that's not fair lot. and it sucks. Yeah, yeah parking lot. Jeez. That's in New York, so like, yeah, that is prime real estate. Yeah. But yeah. we're gonna knock it down, we're gonna kick these people out, and where are they gonna go? Like, what are they going to do? Mm -hmm. it, and it's like, that's the whole crux of this whole series is, like, we, we address these social issues and we never solve them. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, okay. because you can't punch that problem. That's right. And, but and these I'm glad are superheroes. You said that because that is a fundamental problem that Denny O'Neill has with the ending of the heroin two-parter. Mm. Yeah, well, we'll talk about that later. I can't okay. punch drugs. You can't punch drugs. But Neil Adams is like, oh, sure, you can. <laughs> well, at least he finds out that like issues are not as black and white as they appear in space. Yeah. <laughs> and so. <laughs> In space, everything's very simple and it, straightforward. Yeah, well, with it's all almost the like they're, crazy they're aliens of... with all their different cultures <laughs> that are infinitely more varied than what we could possibly have. Yeah, but on they're also one very simplistic. Planet. They're more like uh, like allegories for our real current oh, contemporary issues, but, but made simplistic for a comic book. <laughs> I mean, like I, mean I mean, for space. <gasps> so Green Lantern is uh, he's his mind is being opened, and then this elderly black man comes up to him and he goes. Oh, I read about you, Green Lantern. You work for the Blue Skins. You've done a hell of a lot of work for the Purple Skins, but you've you've never done jack squat for the Black Skins. Why is that? Oh. <laughs> and Lantern's like, oh, I don't know. And he's like, well, why don't you go think about that for a little while? And so Green Lantern's like, holy shit. Like, I'm supposed to be the protector of Sector 2814, like this, this whole area and this planet. Yeah. But I'm not thinking about people on this planet and how nuanced their problems are and right. how some people are underfoot. Yeah. You know, if I like their problems aren't all coming from space. If right. I saw one race of purple skinned people being oppressed by blue skinned people, right. I would do something. I would about just that. defeat the local government, have them rise <laughs> up, but I, I I haven't done that here. Why? Now that doesn't mean that Green Lantern immediately goes to the Capitol building and right. starts some shit. I know just what to do. <laughs> no, oh, 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 no, my God. Oh, God. Oh, he Great. learned the wrong lesson. Okay, we gotta call oh, Clark. <laughs> but he immediately goes to the Slumlord and he's like, hey, you're a piece hey, of shit. Hey, what the fuck? <laughs> yep, I'm sorry, I saved you. Yeah, and the Slumlord's like, get fucked. Yeah, well, you did. <laughs> Too late. Yep, and he's like, you have no legal precedent to stop me. Yep. I own the building, they're my tenants. There's nothing you can do about it. Now fuck off. Yep. And Landon's like, well shit. No one's ever said that to me But that's not fair. That's it. So he leaves and Green Arrow's like, not so easy, is it? He's like, no, it is not. And so Green Arrow's like, let me try something. So he goes to the slumlord. Puts a couple of arrows in him. He goes, he goes, hey, you're a piece of shit. And the slumlord's like, that, yeah. <laughs> it's been established. And he goes, listen, give me $25,000. And the slumlord was like, what? And he goes, yeah, I want $25,000 and you're gonna give it to me. There's an abandoned building over uh, on like, you know, a block or two down. I'm gonna wait in there at, like until after dark. You just come meet me there and give me my money. And I'll see you then, you piece of shit. And <laughs> these, are the, these are the plots. Wow. So Arrow goes there and the slumlord's like, <laughs> and Green Arrow's like, <laughs> because they're both playing in a scheme. Two hitmen hired by the slumlord go to the meeting. So the hitmen open the door to this like abandoned store and they're like, hey, are you Green Arrow? And Green Arrow's like, yeah, are you the slumlord? And he names the slumlord. And the guy's like, yeah, we were sent by the slumlord and now we're gonna kill you. So they shoot the desk where Green Arrow is presumably sitting behind. In right, shadow. he's in shadow or something. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So the then- A the, dummy falls. A dummy yeah. falls and they leave. And then Green Arrow's like, yes, I made them admit that they were hitmen for this guy and now this tape recorder, uh, and the tape recorder was shot by the bullets, and he's like, ah, oh, I'm back uh, to square one. What a waste of time. All right, I just have to riddle this guy with arrows. <laughs> now I'll kill him with my arrows. Uh, yeah. no. Well, I tried. I tried. Kill, 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 kill. Yeah, well, <laughs> there's a whole issue in here where Green Arrow accidentally shoots somebody and kills them, oh. and he goes and joins like a monk society. Ah, geez. And then yeah, that's gonna fix How everything. has he never killed anyone with an arrow before? <laughs> it, it, you're he's using green a, arrow. You know what's never come up? It, uh, apparently not. <laughs> or apparently it was never really an issue until now. Or no one saw him do it. <laughs> no, he, <laughs> so he didn't, no, it was, so he didn't uh, he, feel it was alone. To, oh, okay. He, he, it was all his shame. 
So Lantern and Arrow are talking to each other about like their mutual failures, trying to get through to this guy. Yeah. And, and, and Lantern goes, I have an idea. So they kidnap the district attorney. And Oop. then they go to... It's usually a good plan. Yeah. yeah. They well, they don't kidnap him. They like they they carry him via a Green Lantern hard light construct seat, <laughs> but he doesn't seem like he wants to go, <laughs> and they leave. So and they then, kidnap him. Yeah, they kidnap the, the DA, and then but he doesn't complain because no. of the implication. That's right. <laughs> it's like dawn when Arrow and Lantern meet, mm -hmm. and they're like, wait a minute, the the hoods left in the cover of darkness, and now it's like three in the morning. So, it's it's before the age of cell phones and internet. <laughs> so. It's not quite working time yet. So the, the Slum Lord doesn't know that the Hitmen have failed to kill Green Arrow. Mm. So then Green Lantern, disguised as one of the hoods using his lantern powers, goes to the Slum Lord after kidnapping the DA and bringing him along. Right. And coerces the Slum Lord into revealing right. that he did hire Hitmen to kill Green Arrow. Right. And, you know. It turns out that the DA was hidden in the office at the time. <laughs> okay. You know, Green Lantern reveals himself. He's like, ah, ha, ha, I made you reveal that you're a criminal. And the DA is like, we've been wanting to get this guy for years. So thanks a lot, Green Lantern. Nice job. You're under arrest, pal. <laughs> and like, that's the only time they ever succeed in this book. <laughs> I and love the idea uh -huh. that a, a slumlord will hire people to get murdered. Yes. Yeah. Or, or, or hire people to murder somebody. Right. And those people will try and do that. Yes. Think they murder them. But they're like, well, I mean, we're not gonna call him right now. It's the middle of the night. Yeah, that'd yeah. be rude. <laughs> That's yeah. right. We'll just wait until well, he's sleeping. You know, yeah. it's really late at night. Plus, like, they failed and they don't yeah. want to give him bad news. They're not eager to deliver bad news. Yeah. I thought they thought they no, they, no, they, they saw the dummy. The they're like, oh, I gotta get out of here. They won. Yeah. Like, oh, it's a setup. They didn't let's, know they, they didn't. Let's know get out of here. Exactly. So, the 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 slumlord goes to jail. Okay. And what's funny is like, what the fuck does that mean for the tenants? Who owns the building? Well, the, the slumlord. The slumlord still owns the building. Right. He's just in jail. He's just in jail now. Yeah, he can still sell it. Right. You skipped the part where the, oh. the developer pulls out a grenade <laughs> after he's caught. I know, he's like, oh, you never take me alive. And he takes a grenade and he's like, it's live. <laughs> Green Lantern stops the grenade. He grabs it and puts it outside the building. It goes off, shatters probably a dozen windows. <laughs> Hurting <laughs> hundreds of people. Couldn't he yeah. just encapsulate it in a green bubble? He could, but he instead could. He, creates, he creates a big green hand and flicks it out the window. And it explodes. And it explodes, and they're like, and oh. And fortunately, nobody on the ground is hurt and by like, the shrapnel from it. And they are surprised because they thought he was bluffing. They're like, oh, it's live. Oh, Shit. that was a real grenade. Wow. I, I probably would have encased it if that were the case. <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah, thanks. Yeah. So, That's not a live grenade. You just Here, I'll just shove dice. it in your mouth. <laughs> Kaboom! Oh! Oh my god! Well, and the well, DA's like, well, I mean, we had a really shaky case to begin with, so... <laughs> Honestly, that All's never well, would have stuck, so... Really. <laughs> so the Don't end feel of too bad about it. We were never gonna keep, that would, we were never no. gonna keep him in jail. So then, like, they're, they're celebrating their win, and then uh, the, the Guardians appear before Green Lantern, because they can, like, astral project or mentally project themselves. <laughs> like, what Thank the fuck god. are you doing? That's it! It's not just like, hey, we're all on Earth now! No. The no. hell? We've done a lot of Green Lantern books in this show, despite the fact that Green Lantern is like my 12th favorite superhero for some reason. Yeah. And every time we talk about Green Lantern, we talk about how shitty the Guardians are. Yep. And this does not disappoint. They are complete garbage. <laughs> and they're like, uh, you're not supposed to do this. Like you're supposed to solve super villains and space crime, not cultural problems. Like you're not supposed to save people from being evicted from their apartments. Like that's too small yeah. and it's too intricate. Like it's not black and white enough. Yeah, yeah you're picking a, a side lantern. in this yeah. debate. Not a governor. Yeah, yeah. And, and Green Lantern is like, oh, I'm really sorry. And Green Arrow goes, <laughs> Like, who the fuck is this blue guy? He knows who the Guardians are, <laughs> but he immediately goes, yeah, that's right, cower before your fucking overlords, you jackbooted Nazi. Like, he calls Hal a Nazi earlier, and I'm like, you've already lost the argument. Like, dude, <laughs> Hal, Hal misread a situation, and you called him a Nazi immediately. Like, he's the worst kind of liberal. Like, I, I appreciate that Green Arrow's willing to put himself on Front Street for his beliefs, but at the same time, it's like, dude, you can dial it back. But like, it's also- <laughs> You sound like a complete asshole right <laughs> He's now. a complete asshole. He's just, and it's like, no, but Denny is trying to infuse, like they're both extremes. Right. Yeah. Except Hal is not. Like Hal is always like, I mean, maybe he's got a point. And they're like, no, he doesn't. He's no, like, nah. shut the fuck up. And he goes, oh, I guess you're right. <laughs> that's, that's usually how it goes. <laughs> uh, well, your passion has won me over. Like literally, <laughs> Hal Jordan, after, the being being belittled by that elderly black man, he goes, I used to believe in the oath, but now my whole confidence in being Green Lantern shaken. 
And instead of Ollie being like, it's okay, we all learn lessons, like, that's right, you piece of crap. <laughs> that's exactly what those conversations are like. So, but I love that, like, Ollie's got one in the chamber for everybody. Like mm -hmm. these, these guardians show up and he's like, and just immediately. So he, oh, I know how to deal with these fucking guardians. I'll tell you how to listen to these Opa Lopas. <laughs> that's basically what he says. Like he yells at Hallie. He goes, yeah, that's right. Why don't you piss yourself and cry in the corner? And as for you, you big blue asshole. And he, he just lays into them where he's like, our country sucks. It's on fucking fire. Everything blows. Like three years ago, Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated and Robert Kennedy was fucking assassinated. Like we're, we're, we're in the shit. Green Arrow gives like an impassioned speech about how like there's something sick and wrong with America. Yeah, and he I'm says like, a hideous moral cancer. Yes, yeah, has infected us. And yeah, but the Owens don't care. No, they don't. But he's like, yeah. but sh you should. Like, if you picked a human, you should care about his problems and the problems that are afflicting his race. Right. Isn't this part of his sector? Shouldn't he worry about it? <laughs> he doesn't really make that much of it. He, he's he just. Lays it out. It's just there. like you think you're so good, and right. you're just ignoring these. And you real let problems. this shit happen. Do you think that this is uh, Denny O'Neill yelling at yeah. the publishers of comic books, mm. being like, "You're you're <laughs> you're only interested in these fucking super powered characters fighting aliens and shit." Right. And like, what about this like real shit yeah. that's happening that I you're mean, just not interested in? That is, I mean, this is the marching orders for this book from nobody. Like from mm -hmm. Denny and Neil and maybe Julia Schwartz. Right. I think the idea was Denny and Neil wanted to make it a socially conscious book and Julia Schwartz is like, the book's getting canceled anyway, go for it. Yeah. And so, <laughs> No sacred cows. So yeah, I got I mean, no horse in this race because the race is over. The yeah. fact is, Green Arrow looks at the reader mm. and he says there's something wrong yeah. with America. Yeah. I think he is, not only is Denny talking about the books, but he's also talking to the reader. Right. And it's like, this, these books are being bought at this point by children. <laughs> and he's trying to reach them yeah. and have them ask hard questions of their elders. Mm -hmm. And maybe some of the adults who are buying it because we're, we, are, we are sprinting headlong and practically defining the Bronze Age of comics right fucking now. Mm. Except that five months before the speedy heroin issue, Mm -hmm. Stan Lee decides to do a three-issue story in Spider-Man about drugs. <laughs> and in the, like, source code of the Comics Code Authority, in the bylaws of what makes up the Comics Code, one of the major points is you will not show, talk about, discuss, like, no drugs at all. You, like, they don't exist. You can't, like, if you did a story about how drugs turn you inside out... <laughs> you still can't get approval. Like, you can't <laughs> right. even make it a cartoonish parody of what drug use is like. You will not get approval. And Stan, Oh, that's great. That's the finger in the ears approach <laughs> to yes. problems. Yes. Yep. Or the D.A.R.E. program. So <laughs> Stan Lee goes, fuck you, and does it anyway. Just, just launches it without the Comics Code Authority and sets the world on fire mm. in the comics world, of course, right. by being like, we're going to publish this. And it's like, it, it is cartoonish. Like mm -hmm. they take pills, yeah, and just it's, and then they're like, "I'm flying." It's still lame and ridiculous. Yes, and and in this one, it is it is heroin. Yeah, like it's serious. The yeah. Batman couldn't say heroin. The movie that was made this year, they couldn't say heroin. They had to invent a drug that oh, they take yeah. in that movie. Yep. But in this book from 1971, it's fucking heroin, and it's like, yeah. But five months earlier, Stan did pills, and Harry Osborn got addicted to them, and it's a major character. He was addicted to drugs, and it was like, they, they did it. Yeah. And, he, and he did not just like get cured at the end of the issue. Like That right. was a problem that will bother him forever, and it like got dealt with. And no approval from the Comics Code, but... It came out anyway. Nobody it's, gave a shit. It's not like the yeah. Comics Code Authority stamp was like, well, it's not on there. No. I yeah. can't buy that. No, nobody cared. Nobody even noticed, honestly, but like... What, who did notice? The fucking Comics Code Authority. Huh. And DC and Marvel came to the table and re-fucking wrote the rules of the Comics Code. Oh. So the books would still... Because the reality was the Comics Code was just created to protect them from yep. government oversight. Yep. They're like, if we don't police ourselves, the fucking government will and pass. So they need to come up with a new... And, and I'm sure the Comics Code was also shitting their pants being like, uh-oh, they found out we are wholly irrelevant. Yeah. Like, they don't need us anymore. Yeah. It was just because of McCarthyism. Yeah, and that's and over now. <laughs> and it's not one of those, congratulations, you've you learned a lesson and <laughs> grown up, you can govern yourself. They disappear. <laughs> yeah, no, that, no. They're like, we're getting paid to do this. I'm not fucking losing my job over this crap. So they, re, they, they came to the table and re, rewrote it. Okay. But, but five And it lasted prior. another 20 years or however yeah, long. Yeah, but five months prior, Stan had done that. Hmm. Unless you ask Neil Adams. 
uh, months before Stan came out with those books, yeah, I drew the cover to that Speedy issue. And I okay. took it to all these editors at DC for approval and no one was strong enough or morally conscious enough to approve that story. And then after Stan did it, then they were like, oh, it's okay to do that. Or at the very least, like we can try ourselves. And so they did it but they had to wait for approval or they had to okay. see what was going to happen. And well, I'm like, I, let's no. see what happens to Marvel when they do it. Yeah, nothing. And so they did it anyway. But like the fact is, no, you didn't. Because <laughs> you didn't know what the story was going to be because Denny wrote those stories because Neil and Denny did not meet. They were not friends. Yeah. They did not hang out. They did not go to the same office. What happened was O'Neill wrote the scripts. He sent them to Schwartz, not Adams, Schwartz. <laughs> Schwartz and, o and Adams worked together. Like, Schwartz gave the scripts after editing and approval to Adams. Adams drew them, gave them back to Schwartz. And that was it. That was their working relationship. Well, yeah. as it turns out, Adams just always drew characters doing heroin. It was a thing of his. <laughs> well, he did actually volunteer yeah, at drug so rehab centers. Like, yeah. uh, Neil Adams had something to say about drug abuse because he saw it firsthand. And he was like, we have to make it heroin. It has to be about this real problem. And it's like, yeah, man, early 70s. Yeah. You're right. So... We're getting ahead of ourselves, but like it's just that's the kind of like amorphous history that is the comics book world, right. where it's like, yeah, no, like if you want to talk about like milestones in comics from the big two, the first comic to not get approval from the comics code is a Spider-Man comic written by Stan Lee about drugs, and then it's like five months later, DC did it too, <laughs> and it, instead of the five-time Shazam award-winning run of this book that shouldn't exist because it should have been canceled before it came out. Like, <laughs> it, you can take your wins and it's okay. No, no, but it, I was actually first though. Who cares? Exactly. <laughs> like, okay, that's great. Okay, good for you. That's but great, like, Neil. Everyone remembers this run for all these other things you did. And if you want to talk about the pop culture recollection, I know the cover of that Spider-Man book where the where, where that was not approved by the Comics Code because it's the issue of Spider-Man where that wasn't approved by the Comics Code. It's thoroughly unremarkable, by the way. It's like Spider-Man's like being like he's jumping on a wall over there, and there's people <laughs> over here. It's, it's it's not terribly interesting. The Speedy cover has drugs on it. It has a <laughs> junkie doing drugs on the cover. Boom! It, like it's in your face. Yeah, it is more impactful, but it ain't first. Right. So anyway. Uh, the, the Guardians are, like, being given the business by Green Arrow. Yeah. And they're like... <gasps> and so, and you let this compatriot sides. of yours speak to us like this? Now, here's what happens. Uh, the Guardians decide to weaken Hal Jordan's ability to use the ring, and now he can't be impervious to harm. If he's going to be shot or hit with a crowbar, he will die. Why did they do that? Fuck him. Don't fucking disagree with me. And one guardian. How one, could that be your answer? <laughs> because they're dictators. Because they're, they're assholes. Yeah, since they argue for a week about it. Yeah. Can you imagine Green Lantern just being like, like six days later, being like, what the fuck are they doing? <laughs> but, All right, we figured out the terms of your suspension. Yeah. But uh, one of the guardians decides, you know what? This is interesting. Like, you're right. Green Arrow, I don't know anything about this. And apparently, all the alien races don't have the nuance the human race does. So I'm coming to Earth, I'm gonna look like a big-headed white dude, and I'm gonna hang out with you guys, and I'm gonna learn about America. He uses a lot of brill cream. <laughs> he looks exactly like a metal lunatic. <laughs> so all three of them get into a truck, and they drive across America, and you know, like, get into adventures and stuff, and learn about what it means to be American or what makes America what it is, and maybe find this moral cancer that is eroding America. Spoilers, they don't find it, and they don't care either. Oh, you <laughs> mean it's not just a problem that we can carve out and be done with? Nope. Oh, it's part of people being <laughs> assholes? Yep, but they don't say that. They don't know. They, they, they just reinforce the lesson of, well, that was fucked up. Mm -mm. Well, How about this? Well, here's some fucked up shit happening. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Wow. Imagine was... the Guardian Oof. at the end of it being like, your people are really bad. <laughs> yeah. he, oh my God, this why did planet's a you? nightmare. Okay, so here's the thing about that guardian, right? Is he goes through the ringer. Like this was the worst mistake of his life. <laughs> I'm sorry, of his eternity because right. they're immortal right. until he isn't. But uh, he, is this Ganthet? No, he it's not Ganthet. Oh. Okay. Wow. He's okay. the only one I know the name of. I know, because the other one, because this one has three names and it drives me crazy. Oh and it's like Ali, Appa, Apsa. Appa, Ali, Apsa who will get a name after this run. 
so that yeah, people can refer to him. Yeah, he until yes. we can refer to him. Yeah, he's, yep. he's, he's the, the saddest guardian. Yeah, yes. And in the 90s, like everyone in DC, he'll become a bad guy. <laughs> oh, God damn it. God damn it. Oh, but he became a bad guy from experiencing Earth. Yeah, you could, wow. you could trace his fall from grace directly to this. Wow. That's kind of interesting, actually. Yeah, he kills all the Guardians. Like, he's a real asshole. Oh, shit. Or Damn. is he? Or is he a hero? Oh. Because the Guardians blow. Yeah. Anyway. I don't know. So, yeah, maybe he's taking Ollie's side on this. Yeah, but who yeah. is he to we gotta decide? Take down the system, man. <laughs> yeah. Dude, but Ollie doesn't do that. <laughs> no, he doesn't. He doesn't go to Congress and shoot everybody. No, he doesn't. Uh, all right. So yeah, this every is just, issue is just that. Uh, that'd yeah, be, this is Ollie's oh ideals taken to extreme. Yeah. yeah. It's like, I did I did what you said, Ollie. I, yeah. I took on the system. I no, killed all the like guardians. This. Not like this. Oh, my God. Yeah. So, Opsa, let's talk about Opsa's journey. Yes. So, Opsa's journey is, you know, he, there's one story uh, where he needs to shield a young child from collateral damage, and he learns to feel bad for people and children and stuff. <laughs> he learns to eat. Uh, he, sees, he learns to eat. Well, he doesn't need to, but he's like, I want to fit in, so I will. Okay. And he eats a plate of beans, and he's like, these are amazing. Uh, and they remind me of food we used to eat when I wasn't immortal. And it's like, okay. <laughs> All right. So, uh, uh, oh, so what happens is, later on in, a, in an environmental story, uh, there is a oil rig, or like a... Uh, so it's like a, a ship. Drill? No, it's a ship okay. that's carrying crude oil. Mm. And it catches fire like its engine explodes and it knocks out Hal and it gives him like a like a brain swelling or something like he's going to die oh. and so because the guardians took away his invulnerability that's right, right. so Ops's choice is because they they have to leave and they don't want the whole ship to explode so they dump the the, the barrels overboard okay. and damage the environment uh. so Ops's choice is to stop them from doing that or rescue Hal Jordan and Ollie's there and he's like you gotta save Hal Jordan so Opsa goes and takes Hal Jordan to like, presumably Oa, but like some place to heal him. Okay. And he does, and he comes back, and then the Guardian's like, uh, Opsa, you chose the needs of the few over the needs of the many, so you failed. You're no longer a Guardian anymore. Oh, shit. Or at the very least, you need to be judged. Oh. So they said- No, no, I saved the many by saving Hal Jordan. Hal Jordan will save thousands, if not millions of people across space. No. You're the one who talked about how this planet's super special and stuff. Well, now these ducks have oil on them and crap. So that's <laughs> you on you. You chose one species over another yeah. arbitrarily. <laughs> it's, it's that's it's, complicated it's, as fuck. Yes, Jesus. Even the, even the guardians are like, look, we all saw the Sarah McLaughlin commercial <laughs> with the animals that are in terrible conditions. Yeah, yeah. We, we can't abide by what you did. Right. So they send Opsa to the Judgment Planet for Guardians, which they haven't seen in millennia because they're all like circle jerking each other and don't actually care about their like <laughs> about other people's problems right they all agree with each other all the time so right. it's been it's been a long time since there's been dissent or a need for judgment so opsa goes to the planet where there is like an impartial group of similarly blue skinned but not big headed guardian judges who are supposed to judge them but when they get there, it's a robot planet full of robot judges who are like, and he's immediately- We don't immediately judge us now. We yeah. don't judge you anymore. Well, yeah. we judge you and you're judged to be guilty because you're a fleshy idiot. And <laughs> Ollie and Hal go with him to like advocate on his behalf and they're arrested too. And so they all go to jail. Damn fleshies. <laughs> yeah. So they all go to jail and uh, they, they, they topple their metal overlords because like the mechanic for the robots decides that like the robots are better than the judges who are there. And so he takes over by like reprogramming the robots to take over the judges. And so he runs <laughs> the planet and then they have to defeat the mechanic and they defeat the robots and then they put the old judges in charge. And then they're like, well, that's enough for us. And the judges are like, I mean, you can go and- You saved us. Yeah. And Thank you. And Ops is like, no, I deserve to be judged. Like, I should be judged for this. So then Ops is like, I'm gonna stay. And Helen and Ollie are like, okay, well, bye. And so they leave. <laughs> oh my God. This is insane. So they leave him to be judged and they go on more adventures. It's, it's, it's like, we gotta, oh God, I'm so sick of Oppo. We gotta get him out of the fucking book. Well, they, I mean like, <laughs> yeah. Well, you know. He's been in like three like, issues, Jesus. I'm done. He's been, he's, he, we, we've done all we can with yeah, this. Yeah, I just game. wanted to tell some fun stories about Hal Jordan. Yeah. And, and, also, he's such and, a and buzzkill. Yeah. He just keeps talking about beans. <laughs> he loves those beans. It completely ruined him. Yeah, it turns out there's not much you can do with this fucking character. Let's That's go, right. Let's also, it turns there. out after five beans, a guardian will fart like nobody's business. <laughs> yeah. Well, Can't they, be in the car with him anymore. They haven't eaten in 
trillions of years or whatever. So, uh, who, who the, is this like movie executive no. character? Is that the mechanic? That's the mechanic. Uh. They're all incredibly distinct. Every villain in this book is clearly based off of a real human being that exists. Yeah. Wow. He's in like a, he's wearing like a robe yeah. and he's in like a lounge chair. Yeah. No, and he, he has is, pink glasses. He is somebody. He's a fucking guy. Right? Like he's. Who are you? He's Truman Capote. Mm. Maybe. But that's not the end of Appa's story. So what? No, because then he is judged. And okay. they determine that he is still going to lose his immortality and he's going to have to be exiled to the Guardian's original home planet. Where oh. he will live out his days because he's a bazillion years old and now he doesn't have his immortality anymore. So he's going to die sooner rather than later. So they drop him off there. And when they get there, it turns out because the Guardians don't live there anymore and they're like a gazillion years old, they never thought about that planet. And that planet becomes an allegory for overpopulation. And as you can tell, it's funny because if you ask O'Neill, he talks about how uh, not every issue's social problem is a thing that he cared enough about to really put his heart and soul into. <laughs> uh, but he did know that like the plan is that each issue is going to deal with a social problem. Right. So like this one's about overpopulation. And, and I, like something we all have to deal with on Earth. Right, and I don't really care, so it's about this. So, like, yeah. there's this one woman who's in charge of, like, the artificial growing process of making people for this planet, but she, like, went overboard and artificially aged these people up because that's what they do. And they people, go, people, people! She's, she, she just overproduces people. Maybe she's just really into, like, the design aspect. So the, I, no, it's the idea that, like, she, she believes, or at least she's been made to believe by society. Whose society? I couldn't fucking tell you <laughs> ours obviously but not on this planet she <laughs> decides that like if you can't give birth if you can't be a mother then you are not a true woman and mm. so as a result she overproduces these artificial people and these artificial people need food and shelter and clothing and they don't have any resources for them right. so it becomes anarchy and then ultimately they like storm the capital and they defeat the mother but they realize she's a sympathetic person so they take her with them and then Appa oh decides to stay behind and help this planet because he's like, this planet needs help and I have like a vast intellect and all this information, so I will apply my lessons to this planet and save these people. And that's what happens to him. He stays there and does that. Is this a planet entirely of men? Y well, the, no, it's, oh, it's okay. like children of men where like the people there stop being able to produce people themselves. Um. And so she overproduced people and to the point where they eventually grew out of their genetic defect to not have children anymore so they could naturally produce people, oh, so which they were doing. Okay. So there's like two production facilities, one of oh. natural birth and one of like artificial birth, which just make it people. And it's just, it becomes a calamity. Okay, I, I was confused by this line, a woman, destroy her! Yeah. Upon seeing Black Canary, I'm like, are there no women here? I, 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 but there are, because I see one right here. So. Yeah, no, there are women all over the place. I, I was a little confused. Yeah, I, I, well, because maybe they're not supposed, they're second class citizens or whatever. Oh, they're not supposed to be out Yeah, I don't know, something? because yeah. like, O'Neill, I, I think O'Neill, I think, I think there's, an argument can be made that O'Neill has an issue with women. Because, <laughs> uh, here's another little historical fact. Uh, there is one period in Wonder Woman's history that nobody fucking likes. And it's the one that O'Neill wrote, where Wonder Woman loses her superpowers, ditches her costume, puts on a, like, mod squad dress, and decides to deal with social problems via her jujitsu. And no one liked it, including the feminists of the time, who mm. were like, uh, there's only, like, one female character in the goddamn DC universe who has powers, and power. you took all her powers away. Yeah. You took away our superhero. And he's yeah. like, okay, sorry. So then... Sorry. He, sorry. So then he takes over Justice League, and to reinvigorate it, he kicks Martian Manhunter and Wonder Woman off the team. <laughs> but don't worry, because there, there is it. an issue in this series where uh, there's an issue of... Uh, a society made up only of women and the women are villains <laughs> in the issue and some of them become literal harpies who attack our heroes. <laughs> My goodness. And I'm like, dude, I mean like, you might want to kind of put a veil over it or something. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so, uh, and there's a, t a planet where it's all women and they're half dogs, and I call them bitches too. <laughs> yeah, like it, he he uh, he did that. Do you get the subtext like, here? He did yeah. it, but Do he called understand? them harpies. Like it's literally the same fucking thing. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, but in that issue, we do find out that Sinestro has a sister, and she's an evil witch, and uh, that's kind of fun, because Sinestro's in the book. Yeah. Great. Anyway, so he, he should be like, you think I'm evil? Look at my sister yeah, over here. Right. <laughs> She's a major Ooh. harpy. 
She's not a harpy though. She just commands them. But anyway, I'm, uh, I'm surprised at how much fucking weird outer space stuff is in this book that I thought was going to be about. Well, only four issues are about that. There's 12 issues of this run. Oh, okay. And after a while, you know, Denny O'Neill's just like, I don't give a shit. Never. Mind. I don't know. Well, it's got to uh, be in space at some point. We should probably get out of here going to space. Yeah. Well, because yeah. you know, despite the fact that we like depowered Hal Jordan and made him like susceptible to pain and, and death. He is still gonna fight aliens and go into space and stuff. Black Canary is occasionally in the book, as we pointed out. Uh, it, it, does she go with them to space? She does go with them to space, yes. And uh, she goes into the interdimensional crystal universe that they banish Hal Jordan in that only women can go into as well. Uh, so anyway, uh, yes, Black Canary is in the book. <laughs> uh, she also is brainwashed by a cult at some point. Mm. And Ollie has to save her. What year was uh, the <sighs> Charlie Manson shit? Yeah, he definitely is doing a Charlie Manson thing. Okay. But uh, if you ask him, he says he wasn't. And I'm like, why would you not do that? Why would you lie about that? About that. <laughs> it would right. win multiple awards and get write-ups in the New York Times. And it still doesn't save it. And apparently, critical acclaim does not save books from cancellation. Right. Like, people were talking about this book and no one was buying it. And so at the end of it, they just canceled the book anyway, and yeah. they relegated the both of them, both of them, <laughs> to the backup of a Flash book. Ugh. Yeah. Ouch. What an indignity. <laughs> Sorry, Flash fans. Yeah, well, probably because, like, children didn't understand what the fuck you were talking <laughs> Almost about. Almost certainly. <laughs> well, also, like, kids aren't reading the New York Times and being like, wow, yeah. like, I really oh, got to oh, wow. this adventure Money. book. <laughs> yeah. And parents aren't reading the New York Times and being like, oh, wow, I got to get this my totally kids. This relevant in book. <laughs> Yeah. I gotta get this in my hands of my children. Yeah. Because, like, yeah, I definitely want them to argue with me and fucking judge me for my own political leanings. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, but, yeah, so that's where it ended up. And then Denny O'Neill and Neil Adams would eventually go over to Batman and create Rachel Ghoul and set that book on fire. And then Denny would go to Marvel and he would write Spider Man and Iron Man. And uh, he would name Optimus Prime because what? Marvel developed, like, the story for Transformers. So he's like, Optimus Prime. That's who created Optimus Prime's name. Uh, and then he would go back to DC, and then he would become an editor, and he would run the damn thing, or at least Batman, which is the damn thing, right? and invent Legends of Dark Knight, and the original graphic novel, or at least redefine that, yep. and the modern story arc, because of course he wrote, well, no, he told Jim Starlin to write 10 Nights of the Beast, which is like the modern story arc in regular comic books. Right. Or at least the eventization of modern story arcs in comic books. Right. Let's get into the, uh, the, the my ward is a junkie story because yeah. the rest of them aren't cares. I mean like, they're interesting if you want to get into them, this book is available everywhere, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But uh, where is it? Where is it? It's after the, the harpies, end. right? It's after the harpies. <laughs> it's after the story where Oh my God, there's one where there's like a girl who has mind powers like Children of the Corn. Oh and shit. And she's, she's manipulated by a man to, like an old man, to use her mind powers to like hurt people that he disagrees with. Oh. And he, he ends up like crippling Carol Ferris, Hal Jordan's girlfriend. Because oh God. She, because she bumped into him and he asked her to apologize and she's like, you bumped into me, man. <laughs> and then that carries over because like, in, and in that story, which is weird, I was like, really this happens here? Uh, ha Green Lantern saves Carol. She's like, oh, Green Lantern, you're Hal Jordan's friend. He's like, I am Hal Jordan. What? And, and I love you. And then they like get together and you're like, what? what? Oh. Is she oh. still and, crippled? Well, she's crippled in a way that can get better from. Oh, okay. But, but, uh, but yeah, like, I, and I assume it's because Denny's like, well, the book's canceled, so I might as well wrap up this, like, romance between Carol and Hal. Right. But yeah. No. <laughs> and they get together. Well, There it is. And then, yeah. and then Carol goes to a town that promises that they will fix her, but it turns out that it's actually owned by Black Hand, a Green Lantern villain, who is forcing the town to uh, really rely on plastics. Anyway, so in Snowbirds Don't Fly, which is one of my favorite titles in this book, <laughs> uh, we see it from the vantage point of heroin addicts, which is like actually kind of cool. Hmm. Uh, but what's not cool is Oliver Queen's reaction to junkies, hmm. which is just derision and anger. Right. <laughs> I mean, at least he's not just murdering them. He's, he's amazing. Because Hal's like, dude, These ease people need up. Help. And he's like, I'm a liberal, but even I don't have the patience for fucking junkies. <laughs> I'm like, holy shit, dude. So, uh, Ollie lives in a shitty area, not unlike Denny O'Neill. He's walking through town. Oh, that's why. He has to be neighbors with them. Yeah. 
He's like, that's right. I yeah. am sick and tired of junkies. Yeah, yeah it's mean, like fucking ripping me off. Right? Breaking so, in my car. Right. <laughs> he doesn't have a car. I got to trip over him in the hallway. Yeah. So uh, Ollie gets shaken down by some tweakers. Yeah. And one of them presents a crossbow. They're like, give me your money or I'll shoot you with this crossbow. And Oliver like makes fun of him and then he gets shot with a crossbow. <laughs> <laughs> like, Take you your own medicine, you gotta, Who has a fucking crossbow? It's you're not gonna shoot me with that crossbow. Boom! It's literally like that, that that joke where it's like, "What are you gonna do? Shoot me with that crossbow?" <laughs> Last words by man who got shot by crossbow. He says, "My God!" As yeah. the bullet goes into him. Is this what I've been doing to people? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I deserve this. No, and then to add insult to injury, like they run away, and then Ollie, like. He's he's got a crossbow in his chest, but he hunches over, and now like the high society types think that he's on drugs, and he's just like a desperate homeless person. Like, oh, darling, step over him, and he goes to like a cop, and they're like, get away from me, you vagrant. He's like, no. He goes to a, a payphone. It's out of order. He crawls into a hospital, and they're like, oh, the buddy. Uh, I think he didn't have a quarter or a nickel on him. It was out of order anyway. No, it you could broken. no, you could dial nine one one and an operator on a payphone for free. You could always dial nine one one for free. So he just he just has the worst day. All he all he has a terrible worst morning. day. He has a terrible life. evening. Yeah, but he gets to the hospital yeah. and they so, eventually help him. So Ollie gets help by the yeah the, the, he gets help with the hospital. They, and he learns a little something about having compassion for people who need it. No, he certainly does not. No, he's he like, learns what? Then they shot me with a goddamn crossbow. Yeah, but Ollie, uh, don't you think it's weird how like nobody would help you and vote. how you were like clearly in desperate need of assistance? Yeah, they're and everyone was just Everyone's judging you. Is no, the fuck arrow them. green? Yes, and that's the idea. He goes, this arrow looks familiar. And he asked the doctor like, to give him the arrow they pulled out of him. And he's like, this is one of my arrows. They shot me with my own arrow. And so he calls I'm up. I'm going to fucking kill them. Kill these fuckers. No, he calls up Hal. And he's like talking to Hal about it because that's like his friend. And they're, they're, their traveling days are over. They don't right. do it. They finished their story with fucking what's his face. Oh, with uh, uh, Ali Apsa uh, or whatever the yeah. fuck. Yeah. And then they just he went their separate ways. He didn't have a name back ways. then, so yeah. The Guardian. No, they're but just yes. friends. They're not on an adventure together. No, but they do okay. still share a book, so they are going to team up once in a while. Yeah. But uh, Green Arrow calls Green Lantern. Green Lantern shows up and he's like, I was shot by one of these arrows. And like, I guess it's conceivable since I shoot arrows that like they could be recovered and used against me. Right. But it seems kind of convenient, so I want to look into this because it's, it's messed up. That, like, right. My what arrows are the chances? Used to, be, to commit crimes. And stuff. Ah, yeah. And then we are introduced to a couple of heroin junkies who are in Ollie's building. And who get their fix from the basement from the guy who like runs the building. And the 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 portrayal of the junkie begging for uh, heroin is similar to reality. Mm -hmm. It's pretty interesting. But he's uh, going he's going for, through withdrawal. He's going and through they, withdrawal. And, and Ollie describes to Hal what he's that going is. through withdrawal. Cold turkey. Cold turkey. Oh yeah. my God! You don't know what cold turkey is. Well, no, let me let learn me explain you. it to you. And then we're gonna go rough up the guy who's his dealer. And they like, just. They just burst the door open, just like attack him. Right. And I love it because like. Oh, what okay. about the junkie? Are you gonna get him some methadone? Or? No, that guy. <laughs> that's why would we do that? Why we already passed him in the hall. <laughs> well, no, he's a fucking junkie. Yeah. That's that's the approach. It's too now. late for him. All we can do junkie. is go kill this fucking dealer. They don't kill him. But I love that like they have Green Lantern. Like you know who Green Lantern is, and this drug dealer's like, I'll fight you too. And I'm like, <laughs> he's Green Lantern. You. What you, are you gonna do? You have like. An axe. Yeah, an, an emergency like Fire fireman axe. axe on the wall that you just grabbed. You're not gonna stop Green Lantern. That being said, I mean maybe the axe is yellow. Green, <laughs> he, yellow does stop Green Lantern multiple times in this run, <laughs> and uh, Green Ar and Green Lantern is definitely hit in the back of the head by guns or socks. Like he he is definitely <laughs> defeated. Yeah, multiple times. <laughs> so we meet a couple of a trio of of druggies okay. who live together or at least get high together in one apartment yeah and one of them is shrouded in shadow so it's obviously speedy and <laughs> they're talking about how their dealer got roughed up and all that stuff uh but they uh they 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 shake down that is to say green arrow and green lantern shake down the dealer for the location of like where you know where hey those... one of your junkies uses a crossbow yes tell me who he is yeah yes so they find out where and they arrive in the apartment <laughs> but no they uh they, they go in there and they're like hey you motherfuckers we're gonna kick your ass and find where'd you get these arrows from and then one of them is speedy <laughs> and like Green speedy like, oh i get it speedy you use the arrows. You're working undercover to take down. <laughs> uh, this thing. He's like, yeah, 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 yeah I'm totally undercover. undercover. That's exactly what happens. That's fucking awesome. 
you know, they're like, well, tell us who your pushers are. Like, tell, because that was, the, the, the guy downstairs was the intermediary. Mm. Like, tell us who the real dealers are and we'll go kick their ass. And the junkies are like, fuck those guys. Yeah, go for it. So right. Like, give them the information. Yeah, because okay. if you go after those guys, we can get their heroin. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go to their apartment while you're beating the shit out of them and steal <laughs> all their shit. Yeah. Well, no, their 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 pace of operations is actually like a a private airfield, so they're oh. not gonna just break in there. But okay. Yeah, they go yeah. to bust up this whole operation. Yep. And yeah. uh, and Green Arrow's like, you know, nice job, Speedy. Good good work. I haven't seen you in like a long time because I literally abandoned you to hang out with Green Lantern <laughs> and like drive across the country twice. Yeah. So, but I'm like, sure you're doing fine. It would be like if like literally if Batman like went to Europe for like a year and a half. <laughs> and Robin just like woke up one day and Batman didn't tell him where he was going. Yeah. Like, and Alfred wasn't there to like make him a And there's meal. no Alfred. It's yeah. just he's in the he's in the manor. Oh, Hello? except that like it's I had to eat rats. <laughs> ah, good. Oh, good. Good. Finally. No, but it, what's funny is Arrow loses his money. Like there was no place to go. Yeah, he there's couldn't no even home. do that. He didn't even have an empty mansion. He just woke up one day and was like, "Well, my... did Speedy live with him?" Speed... Or... Okay, so what the other, the funny Speedy's thing about this deal? is that Speedy was. I don't also know anything a... about Speedy. Speedy was also a Titan, Roy Harper. Uh, but Roy was a Titan, and the guy who was writing the Titans did not know that this was coming. So oh. like, they're writing Titans, and it's happening, and Speedy's just, uh, just, just doing his thing with the Titans. <laughs> and then in the next issue, they're like. Oh, also, he was a heroin act the whole time, and he has to go through withdrawal and shit. And they're like, it's like uh, but I don't want to do that. Get into what I'm doing with the Titans. It well, it better. To, it, well, it does now. <laughs> so that's that. Oh God. So oh oh Jesus. So, but uh, I assume that like, you know, there's a time jump between the most recent issue of Titans and this. Yeah. Because I guess because Speedy is on the streets with these junkies. Yeah. And he's not just in Titan Tower like avoiding Donna Troy and Robin. <laughs> Well, he's shooting up heroin. They go to the to the junk to, to the dealers who were tipped off by the junkie. Oh. So the so the dealers surprise and defeat Green Arrow and Green Lantern. Now remember, Green Arrow has one hand. Yeah, he can't because really... his arm was because his shoulder whatever. Yeah, is... but still, yeah. Green Lantern is Green defeated, Lantern defeated by junkies. By, 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 like, well, drug, dealers. drug dealers. And then ah, uh, because he was made invulnerable yes. by the Guardians, oh, right? No, made he, vulnerable. Yeah, yeah, he's more relatable now. And what's yeah. great about it is then the dealer's are like, okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We've defeated these heroes, these superheroes. Yeah. We're going to use the pure stuff. Because we always cut our stuff. Right, right. We're gonna use the and we're going to we're going to force them to breathe it in and be high. Right. And we called the cops to come and find our like a little bit of our stash. And so they'll they'll blame the hero they'll it'll discredit superheroes and it'll get these guys arrested. Huh. So they're, going to, okay. they're going to get Green Arrow and Green Lantern high on heroin and then abandon them there as the cops arrive. And Why wouldn't they just kill them? I, I don't know. <laughs> well, because we want to do this. Yeah. Because, uh, because they're crazy. Well, I'm not a murderer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm a drug dealer. I may be dealer. a drug dealer. I don't kill people. Yeah, I'm I mean, a drug dealer who operates a gigantic operation at an airport. I only kill people when they stop taking but... my drugs and paying me money. Yeah. Right. So uh, the junkies show up. Yeah, and they're like, hey, we did our job. Uh, don't we deserve something? And they're like, sure thing. Here you go. Here's the pure stuff. We always cut our stuff. Yeah. With like talcum powder or whatnot. So yeah. like, here you go. Here's some like pure un... whatever. Here's yeah. some pure shit. Some yeah, uncut the good heroin. stuff. Uncut heroin, the yeah. good stuff. And so they're like, yeah, all right. all right, we're gonna do some heroin. So the cops arrive, and Roy shows up, oh, because he knows what his like fellow junkies did. Arrow's done, so he <laughs> smacks Hal around. He's like, wake up, and Hal's like, I'm feeling amazing, I, like, because I've been to space. I've never felt this good. Right. <laughs> Adams apparently interviewed actual drug users to ask them like how they felt and what it was like. It is an exaggeration, like. When, when Green Lantern tries to use his powers, he ends up creating a big green monster that is like an, oh, a, Jesus. a projection of himself and how he feels. And it's just <laughs> right. like, it's it's just a nightmare. And they and it grabs them both like, let's go. Uh, it's like, what? <laughs> it's like, yeah, I guess that's fair. Yeah. So, oh, addiction is a giant monster that controls you. Yeah. Oh, okay. So Roy like wakes up Hal and he's like, you've got to get us the fuck out of here or the cops are going to, the cops will never believe. Yeah. That you weren't just heroin addicts. Yeah, <laughs> so, that you tried to bust a drug operation, and, and their plan was to beat you, which they did, <laughs> and then put drugs in you. Yeah. So right. that what? We'll think you're drug users. Right. Or 
your drug users. Right, you came here to use drugs. <laughs> Gee, which do I think is probably yeah, what you're happened? Under a fucking rest. <laughs> so they barely managed to escape. Well, Hal barely manages to make contracts to to get them out of there. They have the worst hangovers ever. <laughs> And Ollie's like, damn it, they made me a filthy, stupid, stinking junkie. It was horrible. <laughs> and Roy goes, hey, you know, Ollie, um, do you understand like why people do drugs? And Ollie's like, yeah, because they're fucking losers. They don't understand how it works. Like they, they you know, they, they, have, they have no self-respect. And Roy's like, well, what if like, what if like, okay, so like imagine those guys who betrayed you. Like what if like one of them, you know, like relied on you to like take care of them and then like disappeared for like a really long time. Mm -hmm. And they felt like, horribly depressed and they didn't know where else to go and they heard that drugs existed and they were awesome. They felt great. And then they got hooked on them. Like, what do you think about that? And I was like, I think that person's a fucking idiot. <laughs> like, I, do, I don't understand subtlety at all. Yeah. He's, uh, he's, this is the point where I was going to have Speedy come out and say hi. Well, Speedy and say says speed. that. That's Speedy. Oh, that's Roy? You know, Roy that's says Roy. that to Ollie. Yeah. Like, it says his, one of his older friend, his older man friend leaves, chases around the country like literally what just yeah. happened. Replaces him with like an older friend who has more yeah. powers than him and <laughs> acts like he's their best friend and then just forgets that I existed for like, let's say five issues. And his response is, oh, Speedy, all your tail lacks is violin music. <laughs> what an unsympathetic asshole. What a fucking asshole. Yeah, and Hal is like, oh, uh -huh. fucking what? Uh -huh. like, your ward is on drugs. Yeah. But no, so uh, they leave and then Hal goes, I think Speedy needs help. Like, you should go talk to him because he's going through some shit. Yeah. And when when Ollie goes back in, he's like, hey, Speedy, what do you say we uh, we, we reconnect because it's been a while? And he just, ca and Speedy's doing fucking heroin right now. Yeah. And it's the cover go. of the issue. He's like, yeah. oh, whoa, you're, wait, wait, you're, you're actually a junkie? You weren't pretending the whole time? And Speedy's like, now you know. It's like he was doing it deliberately to, yeah. to be caught. I feel like he's going to come back. Yeah, I better start now. doing heroin right now. <laughs> so he does, and he's like, and so, so Ollie... You know, he, he, he takes a minute and he, he has a fair and rational con No, he instead he backhands Speedy across the room. <laughs> and Speedy's like, I deserve yep. this. Oh my God. It's horrible. Yeah, that's what Ollie would do. Yeah. Yeah, because this is how how, how Ollie yeah, solves rational conversations. Yeah, he's a blunt instrument. Yeah, he's a blunt instrument. Yeah. Who has opinions. Who's and he does very emotional. Well, also, yeah. I'm not going to realize that this is a human being in front of me. Well, especially this a This is a junkie. A person that I took responsibility for. No. This is a filthy junkie. And after backhanding Roy and he lands on the ground, he's like, please forgive me, I need help. And he's like, nah, fuck you. <laughs> you shut up. You want some help? He grabs a crossbow and shoots him. Yeah. Now we come to it. I got shot by one of my own arrows and I am horribly, horribly embarrassed by the experience. So That's the only reason I'm taking this out on you. So we check in with the junkies. Uh, they're like, oh man, this is so great. We are gonna fucking use this. I've never tried pure heroin before. So the first one does it, and he ODs. <laughs> oh, shit. He he takes it, he's like, this is amazing, and then he just falls in his face and dies. And, and the, the other, other guy's, guy's like, like, holy shit. Cool. No. <laughs> he's like, holy shit, I am not doing that. <laughs> it, it, is, it, is a, uh, it is a college education for that other guy. Wow. Does he not do drugs anymore after that? Uh, you know, probably not. Do we not find out? <laughs> no. This uh, story ain't about him. Yeah. So, so Hal recharges his lantern like he does in every single issue of the book, sometimes twice, and he goes back to Roy's apartment, like the, the, the drug apartment. Would you say he's addicted to recharging his lantern? All he vows to uh, get revenge get revenge on, on the, the pushers who he blames. For, for He has a moment where he's like, was it me? Right. Did I somehow fail him? No. 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 No, it's the children who are wrong. No. I was taught to be strong and independent, to hang tough. It's those, <laughs> it's those pushers. That's what did it. Yeah, not me. <laughs> God damn it, Ollie. I'm not to blame. Speedy even yells at him like, oh, big man like you. Your self-righteousness. Yeah, you get high, you don't need drugs. You get high in your own self-righteousness. <laughs> and he, he's just like, fuck oh, you. fuck you. You I don't know what you're that. talking about. I don't want to hear that penetrated <laughs> insightful bullshit about me. I'll show you some self-righteousness. No. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you abandon you, Ellie? <laughs> oh, that's what we call a breakthrough. That's I'm going to congratulate myself. Goodbye, <laughs> Roy. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, Ollie goes to track down the pushers, and Hal is like, uh, we need to deal with Roy. Right. This poor fucking kid. So he goes and he finds Roy, and Roy's I am like, dealing with Roy by finding the pushers. No, yeah. Hal, uh, Ollie's dealing with the pushers. Yeah. Hal is like, Roy needs help. So he yeah. goes to Roy, and Roy has decided, that some time has passed in between the panels, yeah. that he's going to quit. That being belittled and embarrassed and humiliated by and his hit. mentor and beaten 
Don't forget, physically beaten by his mentor yep. has has made him decide, fuck it, I'm gonna quit cold turkey. So he's going through the shakes, and Hal's like, Oh, I thought you meant quit being a superhero. No. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. No. Like, no. fuck Ollie, I'm done with him. No, Ollie's abuse uh, actually has the intended effect and causes him to quit. Yes. So yikes. Uh, well, it's more like he he demand he wants Ollie's respect and his approval. So yeah. he, he he quits uh, the heroin. So he's going through withdrawal and all, and and Hal's like, is there anything I can do, man? Like, <laughs> can I help you at all? And he's like, no, I got to go through it. Like, could you bring me to a hospital, maybe? No, no, because that's expensive, and also we're not going to do that. Uh, but <laughs> is there something in space you could do? Well, no, no. no Roy doesn't want the help. Planet. Roy tells Hal like, don't help me. Like, I want to oh. go through this like a man. Oh. Oh. Well, that's what Ollie would want me to do. Yes. Oh, God. Yikes. So Hal's like, I'm not going to do that, man. That's, and that's fucked up. I'm no, not going to do I'm that. I'm going to help you. <laughs> so he takes Roy, and while they're while they're on their way to like a, a makeshift halfway house that Hal imposes on someone that he cares about, <laughs> he asks Roy to explain to him, like, why do people get high? Like, why do people do drugs in the first place? <laughs> and so, like, Hal learns a valuable lesson about, like, why people are attracted to drugs. Yeah. So Hal goes to Ollie's girlfriend's house, Dinah Lance, a.k.a. Uh, Black Canary. Oh. And he's like, hey, Roy's here. She's like, hey, Dinah. And she's like, what's going on? And he's like, Roy needs a place to detox. I've chosen your apartment. <laughs> uh, What? Here he goes. It's, it's, he drops him off. And Thanks. He, yeah. Good luck. So because I, I I believe that Ollie needs my help. So then Hal leaves to go team up with Green Green Arrow, and Roy is left with Dinah uh, to care no, for him. Dinah is left with Roy. Yes, to take care of Roy while he gets through his heroin addiction. <sighs> What he needs is uh, just a woman to take care of That's him. That's right. Well, That's what she's good I'll for. I'll be damned if I put Black Canary in another fucking issue of this Green Lantern, Green Arrow book. <laughs> what are you talking about? She isn't the issue. She's right there. Yeah, yeah she she's does just, what she should. She's exactly where she needs to be. <laughs> she can be home, in the kitchen, What's cooking for him, she, caring she for She does him. other things in the book, like, throughout, like, but she is a victim in quite a few of them. So, uh, uh, they find out that, like, a pharmaceutical CEO is actually the manufacturer, or at the very least, the progenitor of these of this heroin in this district. Oh. And he is having a party on his yacht, and so Green Arrow goes to shoot him with an arrow. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so that's what happens. Yeah, uh, and so there's a fight well, on so the he, yacht. So he discovers Green Arrow. Green Arrow gets thrown into the water. Uh, Hal discovers Green Arrow and saves him from a drowning. Uh, actually, no. He gets thrown in the water with that fucking anchor around him. Yes, which they're really, they really, awesome. they, they lament having used a, a, a really perfectly good anchor. Like, it used to be, we used to put it right. in cement, but we don't have any right now. Uh, that anchor costs like $3,000. Exactly, dollars. Like, no, yeah, that's an expensive anchor. Like, <laughs> oh, I don't worry, make, we'll make it all back with the heroin. That's, that's right, because it, it's a lucrative business. Yeah. But no, uh, Ali doesn't even make it to the boat. He's like on the docks and like, people who are protecting the CEO are like, fuck that guy. Like, let's get him out. Who the fuck is this guy? He's yeah. too close to the boat, throw him overboard. <laughs> Look at this weird junkie. <laughs> Basically. So, uh, yeah, so Hal saves Ollie, and then the two of them uh, concoct a scheme to defeat the CEO. The CEO, uh, see what happens is he does all of his business or his, his heroin dealings on the boat, and then in international waters? I can't, they don't talk about international, it's, it's right there, you can see it on the floor. <laughs> no, it's it's definitely tank. not in tank. international waters. No. He's like, I'm on the ocean, you can't get me. <laughs> It's not how that works. It's <laughs> not how that works, man. So uh, they make they make port. He goes to like a like like a center to to deliver the drugs and have it like cut with other things and have it distribute. He has like a distribution center. Right. And he, the, he and he is so rich and powerful. He's like, no one checks. Like I right. can put hard uncut drugs in my briefcase. Right. Get off a fucking boat and walk from the boat to this building and go into it, conduct business, and no one will check because I'm rich and powerful. And it's like, hey, nailed it. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Do they bring uncut heroin from boats to these? No, but they do other things. Yeah. Hooper, who is occasionally called Hopper, I think only in one panel, but uh, you know, lettering. Uh, but Hooper, uh, the, 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 the CEO, pharmaceutical guy, he goes and he, uh, you know, he, he drops off the drugs and then uh, Green Lantern shows up and Green Arrow show up and they're like, ha ha, we got you. <laughs> yep. And uh busted. Yep, and he tries to it's jump over. out the window and he doesn't succeed because, you know, Green Lantern. Yeah. Also jumping out the window? Yeah, well, you know. How high is this window? I'm fucked. Are you kidding me? I'm jumping out the window. <laughs> it's, they say die. that he's going to escape, <laughs> he, but Yeah, uh, but he's going to escape re like life. <laughs> he's going to escape to death out that window. He's going to escape jail. <laughs> By dying. There's a coffin in the next scene. 
It's like Green Lantern could catch him and be like, eh, never mind. No, yeah. well, the coffin is for the kid who OD'd. Yeah. Oh, okay. So they, they beat the shit out of the CEO and they threaten to murder him, but they don't. And then they go to the funeral for the kid who OD'd and the mother is inconsolable. There's actually a horrific moment where she's like wailing and the priest goes, ma'am, we have to close the coffin and put him in the ground. Like we can't, I have a 6.30. Like, <laughs> A lot of people dying right now, lady. Uh, so all I'm like, saying is tea times in 20. <laughs> right. And uh, i got to get my swings in. Yeah. Ollie, Hal, and Roy watch from afar because they have no business being there <laughs> because they beat him up. Uh, but they're, they're there. And also, they're... Ollie refuses to go because he was nothing but a worthless junkie. Basically. Uh, no, how, uh, Ollie learns a le valuable lesson. So in the original script for this, uh, Roy confronts Ollie and the two of them have a frank exchange of ideas and they leave with two different opinions about drug use mm. and go their separate ways. And Neil Adams is like, fuck that. <laughs> so when Adams got the script from Schwartz, he rewrote the script in the last two pages, gave them to Schwartz, Schwartz was like, nice. No, redrew them. Wow. They didn't even draw the last right, page. He, didn't draw he drew the new, he wrote the he, new pages, drew them, gave them to Schwartz. Like, there, like, it's done. Schwartz like, looks good to me. <laughs> Well, these are finished pages. <laughs> That's exactly what it's so well, we're these doing are done, that. and uh, the book comes out in a week, so done. <laughs> I mean, it's getting canceled anyway. Who cares? That's exactly right. <laughs> that, that, that's like that's like the that, that is so freeing and yet also so crippling for this book. It's like, well, it's getting canceled. Who fucking cares? So, and he's like, I care. Yes. That's not what I fucking wrote. That's not what I wrote. So in this, yeah, in the, more or less, in, in what in the canon sequence. Uh -huh. uh, uh, Roy goes to Ollie and he's like, I quit cold turkey. And Ollie's like, good for you, kiddo. I knew you could do it. He's like, fuck you. Get I did it. Bad. No, I did it alone. I did it without you. You didn't help me. You were a piece of shit. Fuck you, man. And then he punches Ollie in the face. Whoa. And he's like, see you around sometime. And Ollie cries with pride. <laughs> he's like, oh my God. Yes, he did it. That's what I wanted. He finally gave me what for. Yeah. He's a man now. That's Off fucked up. You're a fucked up person, That's Ollie. <laughs> Yes, he is. <laughs> if you analyze Ollie's relationship with everyone, yes. Yeah. There, he takes he takes punishment out on criminals in this book severely. Yeah. Premeditatedly. Because Dinah dumps him for the umpteenth time. He's like, at, in one sequence, he is like, I am so pissed that I'm not getting laid right now. <laughs> Someone's going to pay for this. Like, it's like, so I'm going to put on my Green Arrow costume. Oh, my and God. And I'm going to riddle people there. I'm going to take it out on somebody today. And I'm like, this is an argument against vigilantism. <laughs> yeah. You are not a superhero. He's a cautionary tale. You are not even a hero. No, <laughs> you are a psycho. So, yeah, uh, uh, Denny O'Neill condemned the story, or at the very least decried it, by saying that uh, the lesson at the end is that sometimes problems can be solved with a punch. <laughs> Which is what you brought up earlier. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, no, Denny O'Neill was like, no. That's, that's <laughs> no. not the lesson. Yeah. That being said, I think that I like it better. Hmm. Because Ollie deserves a punch in the jaw. He does. And it's Roy a, stands up for himself. Roy stands up for And it's a comic book. Yeah. <laughs> Someone's got to get punched in this book. Well, and it's also a dramatization of how people are feeling and the, the tensions in the sequence. Yeah. Like, it is hyper-reality. It is a cartoon. It mm. is for children. And while I don't agree with the lesson that a punch to the face solves everything, I'm not convinced that the punch to the face solved anything. I mean, Ollie didn't change. Like, the only thing that made Ollie cry was being punched in the face because it shows that he's a man, and that I don't agree with. But Roy is justified in punching Ollie in the face. So good on you, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, the whole idea that they have a discourse about it being like, hey, I feel like this way about drugs, I feel like this way about drugs. Well, we're never going to agree. agree. Like, no, you left me. Yeah, you yeah. abandoned me. I asked for help Yeah, because I mean, you put me in a situation and you didn't. Yeah. Instead, you beat on me. Right? Yeah. You, you slapped me around, it, <laughs> you piece of shit. I would, I would want to read that script, but yeah, it does sound like this is more like, no, Ollie's fucking wrong. Right, Ollie's wrong. And he realizes he's wrong at the end, yes. and he's proud of Speedy for giving him what for. Exactly. As opposed to, he's like, well, I guess we're just going to have to agree to disagree yeah. on what an asshole I <laughs> what am. What an asshole I am. And Dinah's like... Which would be shitty. He's an asshole. <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. But... I, I don't, don't know why I love him. He's a total dick. I would, I would well, want to see this... <laughs> 
I'd want to see the script, though, because it could be that they have a discussion and Ollie doesn't agree, but you get from it that, like, yeah, but he's wrong, though. He just can't easily admit he, to yeah, it. Yeah, he can't admit to it. Yeah. I mean, like, yes. Because he's a stubborn asshole, right. and that's what his character is. Right. Well, in one, there's subtlety, and the other one, someone gets punched in the face. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Is uh, this, it's a little unbelievable yes. that all it took was getting punched in the face, and he was for like, to, oh. I, I think the punch in the face is the period at the end of the sentence for Ollie. It's yeah. like, ah, yes, uh, confirm. Okay. Oh, also, they invent John Stewart the Green Lantern. <laughs> yeah. What? Uh, their very next issue. Yeah. <laughs> oh, also, one of the most famous and celebrated Green Lanterns of all time is invented in this run. You gotta be kidding me. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. It's, you know, it, it happens. Here's what happens. Uh, Guy Gardner was originally like chosen to be the replacement for Hal Jordan. Yeah. Yes. Uh, oh, during this whole run, at some point or another, Hal gives the Guardians the business again. And he's like, I'm not even sure I want to be a Green Lantern anymore. So he basically takes a sabbatical where he gets to be a Green Lantern, but at reduced capacity. But with the caveat that he has an exit strategy. <laughs> like, okay. Maybe I will be not a Green Lantern anymore. And uh, it's more because like maybe my book will be canceled. And so... Uh, <laughs> Guy Gardner conveniently is hit by a bus, and so the Guardians and it's not Hal. Convenient for him. <laughs> no, well, uh, there's like a there's like a big hullabaloo on a bridge, and there's a kid that's like on a broken part of the bridge, and then Guy goes to save the kid, and then like a bus that's like <laughs> near it like loses control and hits him, and they save the kid, and then boom. <laughs> but he like breaks every bone in his body, and the Guardians and Hal go, well, I guess he can't be a Green Lantern anymore. <laughs> Can't be a Green Lantern with broken bones. Yeah. No, well, I thought here's when a lantern the, dies, yeah, the ring, ring picks somebody. That's post-crisis. Uh, yeah, no, the Guardians are like, we like John. And he's like, are like, you go sure? Go initiate him. Yes. And yeah. he's like, are you sure? And they go, leave your bigotry aside. <laughs> okay. And he's Did like, you ask us that question when we picked Guy? Because he's white. <laughs> Hal's like, fair enough. I did just do an entire celebrated award-winning run. Right. Where I'm supposed to have learned something about, like, racism so i guess i'll uh i'll shadow him so he goes to john stewart and he's like hey man so you want to be green lantern and he's like yeah you want me to have like untold power from the stars and not get shot by cops uh. i'm in yes yeah i'm not gonna turn that down right so he's like <laughs> okay well let me teach you my 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 oath you gotta do this every couple of, every every couple of days and john stewart's like that oath sucks <laughs> 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 He's like, but no, that's the oath. Yeah. He's like, well, I got a different oath. Yeah, no, he, he goes, you can change the oath? He reads his manual. He says, whatever you believe in. Oh my God. <laughs> now, John says something like, I like the beware my power part. <laughs> that's kind of dope. And I was like, yeah, anyway. uh, oh, okay. Oh, oh, no. Anyway, here's your costume. Uh, the mask hides your identity. And John Stewart's like, fuck this mask. Huh. I don't hide my face. Oh. This is who I am. And I'm like, wow, yeah, nice. Okay. All right, John. So then, uh, you know, they deal with, uh, okay, so like, the, 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 there's, a, there's a senator who is being protested and they scoop up the protesters and they protect the senator and. Uh, uh, Why? Why do they intervene? Well, because they're protesting him because he's a piece of shit. Because he's like a, he's a racist yeah. senator or at least a political figure who's racist. And uh, yeah. well, so they're protesting him. And so it's like, no, well, they, they might get rowdy and hurt him. And he's like a, he's a political figure. So we got to protect him. And so John. <laughs> oh, okay. So they're rounded up protesters. Well, they're just moving them out of the way. Cause they're, they're blocking the airfield where they're, where they're oh, blocking the. Oh, they, they're obstructing the airport. Okay. Exactly. All right. So then John's they're committing they, a crime. Yeah, yeah. So John like throws oil all over the Senator's face while he like protects him. And he's like, oh, sorry, sir. I didn't see you there. And like, now he has like black <laughs> face on. And he's like, oh, you look, I, I it's like, you want to go pick some cotton? I'm like, oh, but oh. John's saying it, but like a white person's writing it. So I'm like, yeah. mm, nah, let's just. You know what? It's a different time. But yeah, he's humiliated, and, and Hal's like, that's fucked up. And John's like, <laughs> I mean, I could have gotten some feathers and stuck those on him, too. <laughs> right? Like, John is like, it's worth it if you take it away now. <laughs> I got to tell this racist <laughs> asshole <laughs> what for? Humiliate him on TV. And uh, so, yeah, they go to like his rally, and like, there's, he's, he's given some shit. Like, he's, he's spouting. Oh, so uh, Hal's like, oh, since you did that, your job now is to protect the senator from harm while he goes to this rally to say a bunch of racist shit. Oh, wow. How do you like that? Uh. So uh, he does that, and uh, he's spouting some racist bullshit, and then a black man from the crowd is like, oh, yeah, and shoots him. Oh. And Jon Stewart's like, oops. 
Wow. And then uh, Hal's like, oh my God, you let him get shot. You're the worst Green Lantern that's ever lived. So he defeats the, the, the guy who shot the senator or, yeah. the, or the political figure. Meanwhile, Hal's taking down that guy while the police outside who are protecting the, like who are blocking the area from protesters. Right. He's about to get shot by an Uzi. Oh. John stops that guy. And Hal's like, dude, what the hell? Like you stopped him, but not the, guy, the, the assassin. And he's like, yeah, man, I've been shadowing this asshole for a while. I know what he was planning. The guy who shot the senator was shooting blanks and trying to incite a race riot. Oh. And blame the angry black man for shooting this white, per this white political figure. And Hal's like, oh, shit. <laughs> and John's like, yeah, don't you, like, think about nuance and subtlety when you're trying to, like, do your Green Lantern thing? <laughs> and it's like, yeah, didn't you do 12 issues about learning that lesson? Right. Don't you, oh, like, investigate? Did I? Oh, sorry. That was a little while ago. I yeah. thought you were, like, a police officer. Right. Aren't you supposed to, like... Look into this and, like, think <laughs> like about... develop like, sources right. and shadow people yeah. and, and No, I just investigate. put people in cages. I, yeah, no, I, I just show up when shit's already going down and just stop them. Yeah, and put them in them cages. I like, dump them at the police precinct. Yeah, I throw them in the jail. sun, you know, whatever. Yeah, well, I'm sorry, the sun? <laughs> well, you know, if they're really big. Yeah, if they're too dangerous to be kept alive. Ah. Uh. I don't tell Superman that though. <laughs> yeah. He gets real upset. So that, and then they both kind of come to a mutual accord where Green Lantern's like, maybe we need somebody like you hmm. who like asks questions and, and uses and their brain. Uses their fucking brain. Right. And, and, and John's like, and maybe I will stay as a Green Lantern. Like, that's kind of fun. Okay. Yeah. And so he does. But, that's, that's that. But we went from there only being one Green Lantern plus a backup who didn't have a ring to yeah. now there's two Green Lanterns. Well, no, well, you'll be the backup Green Lantern. Like, you're, oh. you're going to replace Guy. Right, so now that you know all this, I'm just gonna take that power away, and uh, if I die or whatever, you can have it back. Yes. Yikes. Oh, <laughs> that sucks. That's rough. Well, except that you're not gonna lose the power because I'm gonna keep training you. Like, I see. Eventually, so he still needs a ring. Yeah. He and it's still like, gets to be a lantern. Yes, and he, and he remains as one because like, you know, presumably he's in training. So it's like you need to learn. Right. You, when, if I'm replaced, you gotta be a full ass Green Lantern. Right, so yeah, I'm gonna keep- You can't just get the ring then. Yeah, because yeah. you won't know what you're doing, and it'll be like it'll be a mess. So, for all intents and purposes, you will be a Green Lantern until you need to replace me. <laughs> it's just when someone is called to protect Detector Two Eight One Four. Yeah, I will answer. It ain't exactly. gonna be you. Yeah. yeah. If, if if I need to go into space, I mean, unless I do need you to come with me because right. you need to learn how to like go to these planets and stop these like dictators or you know, Quartians or whatever. Right. So, but but yeah. why wasn't Guy Gardner in that situation, like in constant training? Right. And, like having well, because we don't want to use Guy Gardner anymore. <laughs> just hit him with a bus. I see. <laughs> so that's that. And then like the and then they, they they basically just stop doing Green Lantern, Green Arrow stories. And so Green Lantern and Green Arrow share the byline, but there's like a Green Lantern story and a Green Arrow story. Oh, and oh you're getting like two comics for one. Three, well, because then they become a backup in the flash. <laughs> but then event occasionally Green Arrow will like coax Green Lantern into hanging out with him or teaming up with him or doing something. Right. And so that's that. And that's okay. that's the whole thing. Interesting. Yeah. So it's a, it's, it, it is a seminal piece of comic book history. Uh, I, I, again, I, I, I don't think it's fair if you say to someone like, oh, if you love Green Lantern or Green Arrow, you're gonna need to read Hard Travel here. It's like, no. You don't just say, yeah, yeah. read this in a vacuum. Learn the history, do the research on this story, or just watch this episode because I just gave it to uh, the most part. I mean, it's not the whole thing. Go. It's not, this isn't replace a college education. It's just like, you need to know the, the players, what they're thinking. There was context. Yeah, and what the context is. This book cannot exist without context because it, otherwise it's just like a really weird kind of like socially tone deaf story that's trying to do something. It wouldn't have existed otherwise. Yes. Yeah, they wouldn't have, and, and that's the other thing is it's, it is deliberately being that. You know, it's like, we're going to be a socially conscientious book. Like, let's do that. It's not, it's not like, Te te technically modern comics where they're like, I'm telling you a story about Spider-Man fighting this guy, but the guy represents this thing. And if you want to go deeper into it, it does talk about like Like this. you can read into it and it's fine. And they're like, no, we are saying this outright. Yeah, like Green Arrow's this gonna look at the reader and be like, you're not doing enough to help the your community. <laughs> the sad part is, is we're allowed to say that because we don't have a lot of issues left. That's true. Yeah, they get the freedom of cancellation to be, to be able to do whatever they want. And the funny thing is, Denny O'Neill gets weary in that concept pretty much like two or three issues in. Where he's like, I don't care. It turns out I don't care about a lot of these issues, but 
I thought I was going to be really hyped for it, but then I thought about it some more. Well, and well, then I got rubber meeting the road, and I'm like, oh, no. there aren't a lot of issues that I can fill an entire run with, especially if that run won't get canceled, which it did. So right. it doesn't matter. And now I can tell Batman stories. <laughs> and so it all worked out. I could do that for days. <laughs> and I'm not doing the same thing in the Batman stories I was doing over here. Absolutely not. Batman is not about that. And I can do that until the 2000s. Like, I can write Batman for the next 30 years. Like, hmm. Denny O'Neill invented Asriel in the 90s. Like, oh, really? <laughs> yeah, Denny O'Neill invented oh, shit. Ra's al Ghul and Asriel. 1972, 1993. Hmm. Like, <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, and also, like, changed DC's publishing line irrevocably. You know, so, and Neil Adams, of course, did seminal work as well with his, like, Superman versus Muhammad Ali and, right. you know, his, his, his Batman run and, and so forth. Green Lantern, Green Arrow, technically hard traveling heroes. This book not only is socially relevant and kind of interesting to look at from the lens of today, because like if you like just read the panel where Ali yells at you for America being sick. Yeah, for not doing enough. And, and not doing enough, it's like, oh yeah, there's something yeah, there. Okay. But then you'll read the book and be like, well, I don't think any of this really applies today, but okay. <laughs> Right. Like there's at least uh, two issues specific. about about the treatment of Native American tribes, and it's like, I, I, I get you. Yeah, that's... you don't really contribute anything. In fact, there's in one of them, Green Arrow dresses like a a, a Native American <sighs> oh. chieftain to like a ghost to spurn <laughs> the tribe into action because they're like oh. they're, they're too complacent, and it's like, eh, yeah. I mean, the cover is Green Arrow in a traditional Native American headdress, like, shooting arrows into, into totem poles. It's like, I, yeah, again, context is everything. <laughs> and they're trying something, you know, like, on one hand, it's like, you know, they're trying something. They're trying to be, they're trying to be conscientious. Yeah. Know? Woof. That's amazing. So, yeah. <laughs> Hey, and, look, they, they made a, a black person a Green Lantern. So right, and like, it's funny they how- They did something. Like right. That I guess that's like the that's like the takeaway from the the journey, right? Like Green Arrow and Green Lantern go across the country and they see America and they they learn absolutely nothing from their experience and well, especially Ollie doesn't. Oh yeah, uh, but they both learn something about the other's perspective in some way. But like, what's the point and its impact on comics? You know, like yes, the. Yes, the comic is talking about social issues, but like, how is it changing anything, and how is it reflective of its efforts? And it's like, at the end of it, you get a black Green Lantern, mm. and yeah, he's a replacement Green Lantern, but he also has his own identity, and he has his own like belief structure. And it's and we're not, not like, he's not he's not Black Hal Jordan, but it's also not like that's what the story was building to the whole time. No, it's not. It's just it's maybe like they learned a lesson, and they're like, oh, and hey, you know what? Like, let's let's make another Green Lantern, and let's make him black. Like yeah. may, maybe they were, they themselves were changed as a result of the journey. Maybe, I, I, I don't know. It but, certainly didn't seem like that from the way it was being told. No, it just kind of like happens. Yeah. Which is kind of cool though. I do appreciate that where they're not like, get ready, get ready or something, something big's coming. And it's like, what is it? It's like Black Green Lantern. Like don't, don't, don't build up to that. <laughs> like just have that happen. <laughs> don't be weird. That's okay. Yeah. Did you think I was gonna be upset or something? Right, exactly. Like you didn't need to prepare me. You could just have that happen. It's fine. Which is what they did. So you yeah, know, yay, good for you. Yeah. Fifty years ago. <laughs> Fifty. Fifty years ago. Years. Wow. Damn. It's a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, older <laughs> audience members. Sorry, people who remember when this who book came out. Who literally bought it off the shelves. Fucking old. Oh, they're not watching YouTube. <laughs> they are. Some of them are. Really important book. I'm glad we got to it. Again, this, we've been doing the show for eight years, and I've been like, when are we gonna do hard traveling heroes? I'm glad we got to this point because like, I wanted it to be more like a history lesson as mm. opposed to like a play-by-play. -play. Yeah. But some of those books are worth a play-by-play. -play. <laughs> Speedy and at least the first one, but like, yeah. I'm glad we got to touch on the robots and the harpies and the, yep. you know. And the, what shitheads the Guardians are, that's always fun. <laughs> the Guardians is always, you're never gonna not be fun ragging on the Guardians. They deserve it and they're terrible. I literally thought you chose this book because it's St. Patrick's Day and there's green in there. I know, well, you know what's funny? I completely forgot. I was like, what am I gonna do? There's nothing coming out. I'll be damned if I do another Morbius episode. Hey, how about we finally cover this fucking book about Green Lantern and Green Arrow? Oh my God, it's Green. It's, and I was gonna tell you, I was gonna 
you're like, dude, we're gonna agree, do a Green Lantern book. You should wear your Green Lantern shirt. But you wore a green shirt anyway, so hey, we worked it out. <laughs> nice. but this book will not be. This episode will not be coming out on St. Patrick's Day, so it's not even worth mentioning. Like, right. I, that, that's so why that's I all getting cut. I wasn't like, oh, welcome to St. Patty's Day. We're gonna do two green characters for the price of one. No, it's just people watch me like it's April. Yeah, and it's like, no, we shot this on St. Patrick's Day for two green characters. <laughs> <laughs> How weird. It's really weird. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's very no, weird. It is weird. That's a weird coincidence because well, we don't do them very often. No, we don't. Like once a year. Yeah, we never do Green Lantern or Green or Arrow. Or Green Arrow. And now we're, and doing, we're doing both, both of them. On St. Patrick's Day. And yeah. It wasn't no. Look at the background. Yeah, it's all green, baby. Maybe it was, uh, maybe it was subconscious. It, it could have been. It's, it, it's on my list. I just, I looked for everything and I was like, I literally went, what am I And I was like, and then I got to this, I'm like, okay.